This is Ozark's Fox News at 9. And welcome into Ozark's Fox News at 9. I'm John Adams. And I'm Jennifer Abreu. Thanks for being with us. These stories are real, new, now. The rabbi of the Tree of Life Synagogue says this weekend's massacre will not break them. <laughs> Rabbi Meyer speaking this afternoon, just two days after a gunman opened fire, killing 11 in what police believe was a hate fueled shooting. The rabbi saying the key to change is for words of hate to stop, and only we, the people, and political leaders hold the power to bring about that change. We will rebuild to be a stronger tree, offering a new light. Offering a Dor Kadash, a new generation, so that collectively people will come and say, Wow, that's how you're supposed to live your life. Another suspicious package was addressed to CNN today. It was intercepted at a post office in Atlanta. The building was evacuated. It's not clear yet if today's suspicious package is tied to the explosive device sent to CNN in New York last week. The man that sent that package and over a dozen others to prominent Democrats across the country made his first court appearance today. 56-year-old Cesar Sayoc allegedly had a list of over 100 more people that he intended to send pipe bombs to. He is facing five federal charges. 189 people are dead after a plane crash in Indonesia. The flight taking off from Jakarta and went down nine miles off the coast. Several bodies have been recovered. Crews continue searching for those others on board. Boeing, the maker of that 737 airliner, says they stand ready to help in that investigation. Brazil has a new president. Supporters of President-elect Jair Bolsonaro took to the streets to celebrate. The far-right congressman won the country's presidential election by a wide margin on Sunday. This election brings to an end one of the most violent political cycles in the history of Brazil. The country has been dealing with a recession, rising crime rates, and numerous corruption scandals. Bolsonaro has been criticized for extreme views and offensive statements toward women, people of color, and the LGBTQ community. In his victory speech, he said he's a defender of freedom and said on Twitter today he will work to unite the country. Well, new at 9 this evening, Saturday's shooting at a Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh is hitting close to home for Jewish people right here in the Ozarks. News of that tragedy affected congregates at Temple Israel in Rogersville. Our Bria Douglas met with the rabbi of the synagogue. Bria, what did he have to say? John, Rabbi Barbara Block says this weekend's attack will mean reviewing the synagogue's security measures to help ensure that what happened in Pittsburgh doesn't happen in Rogersville. To hear that a Jewish synagogue was attacked during a worship service and to hear that the killer yelled, all Jews must die, of course, hits close to home. It was um, horrifying. One day after the shooting in Pittsburgh, Rabbi Barbara Block had to stand strong for her congregants during their Sunday service at Temple Israel. We don't stop with sadness and grief. We recognize that we need to continue working to make the world a better place. It's a world that Rabbi Block believes is torn apart because of political tension and rhetoric she partially blames for the attack on innocent people worshiping. The divided political climate in this country has, I believe, contributed to a rise in overt acts against people who are different from the mainstream. Rabbi Block knows what it's like to have parents who are different. They fled Austria to the United States during the Holocaust in hopes of escaping persecution, never imagining the murder of Jewish people would happen in America, too. My parents were fortunate in that they were able to come to this country, and the idea that the kind of hatred has arisen here is very disturbing. While Rabbi Block knows there's no single solution to the violent racism in this country, she says a good start is to look past a person's appearance and search their heart. I know that this man uh, believed that Jews needed to be killed, and he was learning from websites and from white, the white supremacists. And I think, what if he had 
gotten to know someone Jewish, might that have changed what happened? And if you'd like to show your solidarity with the Jewish population in the Ozarks, Temple Israel will be celebrating its 125th anniversary on Sunday at 3 o'clock. Thank you, Bria. Halloween is just two days away, and back here in Springfield, the Springfield Police Department is making sure neighborhoods are safe from sex offenders. On Wednesday, officers will be checking addresses of registered offenders, making sure they are compliant with the state Halloween sex offender statute. Any registered offenders are required to avoid all Halloween-related contact with children, remain inside his or her home from 5 to 10 p.m. with outside lights off, and post a no candy or treats sign at their residence. Anyone who violates these terms will be guilty of a Class A misdemeanor. While Halloween is a night full of tricks and treats, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration wants to remind those participating in Halloween festivities to drive sober or get pulled over. Drunk driving fatalities on Halloween night are on the rise, according to the agency. From 2012 to 2016, 44% of traffic fatalities on Halloween involved at least one drunk driver. A story that is developing right now. More than 100 people gathered in Jefferson City to search for four year old Darnell Gray after he was reported missing last week. Gray's caretaker said the boy left his home late Wednesday into Thursday and hasn't been seen since. Jefferson City police say they are going back through every conversation they've had about the boy's disappearance because they've received some inconsistent statements. Monday's search party included members of the FBI and the Missouri State Highway Patrol. The city's dive team also searched a local pond after it was drained. Someone knows where Darnell Gray is. We need them to tell us where Darnell Gray is. Gray was last seen wearing a black and white sleeper, black coat, red Spider-Man shoes, and possibly a Mickey Mouse hat. The reward for information about Gray's disappearance has risen to $11,000.